G'day, welcome to another 2022 player report card. We are going to have a look at Corey Durden, who is the uh, who is the jumper number 19, um, second year player, still just a kid from South Australia, now a Melbourneian. Um, 20 years of age, played 23 games now at our football club. 21 this year, um, that game span, two and 21, played the last two games of 2022 with Brody Kemp. Both of them played the last two games and just showed a little bit. Um, to suggest that there was something to work with there for, for this year. And he's certainly, certainly taken his opportunities, no doubt about that. Small forward, um, but Reading his draft profile even before he arrived at our football club in the under 18s in the in the sample he was a he was a midfielder and played in the championships as a midfielder um, but you know at his size 175 centimeters the best opportunity for him to get drafted was to become a small forward so you would think he's still learning I mean he's got it, it looks like he's got some good craft and good potential as a small forward. That's his spot. That's where we played him. But he's still learning that role. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a small forward. Sometimes I think you're just born a small forward. Born a small forward. Is he, is he a midfielder, born a midfielder who's learning to become a small forward? Has he got that pure innateness? I think he's shown he's got some good nows. He kick, kick a great goal, but time will tell whether he's a real natural small forward um, in the likes of a, say, a Tom Papley or a Tyson Stengel. who just got that. Yeah, you just know they just, they sniff. They sniff a goal. They sniff it. Is he a sniffer? Will Curry Durden be a real sniffer for our football club? Contract status, 224. Um, signed that two-year extension in March. Uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to, for the next two years uh, to see him and Motlock come through together. I think it's really exciting. Pick 37, 2020 draft. We didn't have a first-round draft pick, and finally we invested in a small forward. But now I'm saying, was he a genuine small forward? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, he's brought to the club as a small forward. He's got some great attributes. And I uh, I wanted James Rowe at that time. Um, Crows had pick 38. We took the youngster. Um, and the Crows took Rowe for two years down the track, I think. Although statistically, you probably think James Rowe, who did fall away a little bit this year, is probably probably wins more of the ball and has probably kicked more goals. And but I just think upside as as you know the younger player and what he's shown. Um, yeah, I think I think clearly uh, clearly Nick Austin has made the right choice. Um, Sees a snapshot. Eddie Betts going down, not going down, we're retiring. Um, I think the fact you played the last two games, Durden, 221, new coach at the football club, tough player who plays with incredible amount of energy, good attitude. Voss, I think Voss would like someone like Durden. You know, we always knew, you know, no Eddie Betts, young Motlop, Bowie's still developing that. You know, and the question marks on what exact role Fisher was going to play, high half forward. That there was going to be opportunities for for the youngster, and he and he he took that. He took that this year. Had an outstanding preseason. Was really good in that game against Melbourne um, at Marvel Stadium. Hit the scoreboard. Got his spot for round one against the Tigers. Played well. Played right through to round three. Then was out for round four against the Gold Coast Suns with the health and safety protocols. Came straight back in. Um, Fogarty replaced him, but came straight back in against Port Adelaide. And played 18 straight, played the rest of the year. And his form did taper towards the back end of the year. 
Um, so much so, I thought, geez, he's just really just hanging on here, Corey Dutton. Um, but they kept playing him. So trying to understand this small forward role as a fan, um, as an armchair expert at times, is you just got to be really careful um, because you just don't know exactly what they're being marked and assessed on. Um, particularly a second year player. So you look statistically, there's nothing elite or nothing stands out statistically to suggest, shit, how did this guy play 21 games? But you think, you just keep holding yourself back and think, well, he's second year. Second year, learning learning the caper. Um, above average tackles inside 450. And I think that when he first came in, that's what we want you to do. And whatever comes on the back of that, um, is a bonus, uh, but this is what we need you to do. And I think that's probably the stat there. It's the only stat which is above average is that pressure inside forward 50. Um, and I think at times he was able to hit the scoreboard and show some potential on the offensive part of the game, but only average in goals, 15-11 from his 21 games. That will need to improve. No doubt. That needs to get up next year to at least a goal a game, even a little bit more. And by that 224, when he comes out of contract, you, you, you're hoping at, at, 23, at 22, 23 years of age, he's, he's mid-30s, hitting up towards 40 goals a season. Um, and those goal assists, which are average, and score involvements improve as well. Um, below average in disposals. Disposals, I mean, you know, I think he showed he could go up into the midfield. Um, when I say go up into the midfield, the best small forwards in the competition, you look at Geelong, you look at Close, you look at Myers, you look at Stengel, they push up the ground, they push up, they help out defensively, they're, they're winning, they're winning the ball. Um, yeah, so he averaged 8.7. You'd like to see that go to double figures next year, you know, averaging, say, 10, 12 disposals a game. Mark's inside 50 now, probably thinking, why the hell are you talking about Mark's inside 50 for a small forward? Um, but the best small forwards in the competition. This is why. This is why I want to know if he's a goal sniffer, if he can sniff a goal. Because um, the best Stengel and Papley, they're above average in marks inside forward fifty. That's where that's where they become dangerous small forwards. They find that that pockets of space which others aren't able to do. That's about reading reading the play. Um, so I'd like to see that in improve as well. And they're bonus, they're bonus goals. They're bonus goals. Uh, disposal efficiency, kicking efficiency, a little bit down. Uh, but I don't necessarily think he's a poor kick. I don't think he's a poor kick. Um, only kicked the multiple goals on four occasions. Um, his best tally, obviously, is two goals a game. And had 10 games this year where he didn't hit the scoreboard, which is a lot, where he did not kick a goal. Um, yeah, I think... His best performances were two games in particular, the round one game against Richmond, 14 disposals and two goals. And exactly what I was talking about before, the classical crumbing small forward goal, uh, the snap around the body in the last quarter when we really needed, needed it, gave us a spark. But you go back to that second quarter, um, he was able to find, okay, some space inside forward 50 and take an uncontested mark. And I suppose kick an unconventional type small forward, forward goal when Lockie O'Brien was able, able to hit him up. That to me is, is that's to me was where, he, where he's going to have to improve moving forward, uh, becoming a little bit more dangerous and, and having a little bit more impact, okay, offensively. Um, and then the Rising Star nomination game against the GWS in round one. Uh, he was really good. Um, and he needed to be with the other small forwards as well because we didn't have Harry. Um, we had some we had some we had some uh, injury concerns in our front half, and the small forwards really stepped up. You know, and his two goals, nineteen disposals, and he thoroughly deserved his rising star nomination. It's the first one we've had, or we had since Sam Walsh. Um, so yeah, worst games for me. Um, the ones that stand out are the round. I suppose the round. And it's you, you, how do you judge a small forward in his second season? Um, but he didn't get dropped. He didn't get dropped. 
at all this season. So, but I think the round six game against Fremantle, you know, you know, when one end of the ground you saw Lockie Schultz, Swisskowski, and and um, and uh, Michael Walters just absolutely destroy us, absolutely destroy us. And at the other end of the ground, Owies Fisher and Durden only kicked one goal between them, and Durden didn't hit the scoreboard at all, um, and hardly touched the pill. Um, yeah, that one hurt. And I think late in the year, you know, late in the year, he just really tapered off. Um, he just couldn't get near it. You know, and I'll look at those back-to-back games in round 20 and 21. He only had he only had seven disposals. I think it went four and three disposals in those games. He did kick a goal, I think, against Brisbane, but was really quiet. It was lucky to hang on. Um, uh, lifted a little bit against Melbourne in round 22, but it was very quiet against the Pies in round 23. And I thought Motlock really shone in that last game. Um, I mean, you look at him in, in little patches and go, wow, he's, he's got a, this is a wild factor about him, uh, which I like. He's got some wild factor. Speed, acceleration, you know, he's got energy, pressure, he's tough, that inner toughness. Um, he's excitable. Um, you know, when he, he can kick a really good goal, really good goal. So he has got goal sense, um, you know, pushes up the ground and help out defensively. We saw that in some games. Um, and I think at times our small forwards probably had to do a little bit too much of that because we were decimated in our back half. And they were probably asked to do too much. Um, so I shouldn't say too much, but they were probably, probably uh, spending a lot more time away from forward 50. Um, in that middle part of the year where it did dry up. And I think he's got really good attitude, really good attitude. I think, he's, I think we've got a good one in regards to attitude um, and a willingness to learn. I just don't want to pick out weaknesses. It, 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 I mean, his size, obviously, but I think, you know, you look at Papley and, and Stengel, they're not tall. Uh, I did think a small forward. He's not gonna, it's not size. He's solid. He's big. He's strong in the core. So it's... I don't see size as a weakness. I think, I think it's, you know, it goes missing a little bit. Just goes missing. You know, it's like, oh, shit, is Corey Deaton actually out there? But, I mean, is that the role? He's young. Um, can he go to that next level? We're just going to have to find out. So learning, he's learning, learning the role, learning the system, learning how to um, sort of, I don't know, working with, with Harry and Charlie and, and Jack Silvani, whoever else is playing up in the front half and with these other small forwards and what they're being asked to do. Um, I don't know, one word. I've just gone, for this one, I've gone investment. I just, I'm just wrapped. We've finally invested in some small forwards. He was the first one. Um, you know, I don't think always, you know, I think when always was first drafted, well, when he first got, his opportunity as a category B rookie, I think it was, was it under Silvani? Yeah, it would have been under Silvani. I don't think we exactly knew what he, what he was drafted as. I think it was just as a as a, a reasonable athlete um, with a basketball background and, and sort of bring him in. But these last two with Nick Austin, you know, you're talking um, Corey Dirt and, 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 and Young Motlop, uh, just pure investment small forward investments. Um, you know, we've now got, we've got a few of them on our books now. I always might lock to it and Chuck Fisher in there at times as well. But that's the trio at the moment. That's the trio. Um, and can they, can they go to a Stengel, Myers and Close? Because they, they, those three on grand final day for me, and I think it, a little bit underrated how good those three were. And I know Stengel kicked four, but Myers and Close were just outstanding. Those That trio of small forwards to show exactly what small forwards are capable of doing in a good system. Um, and they're not old. They're not old. Stengel, Myers and Close aren't old. They're a little bit more experienced than the ones we've got, but they're not old. So can ours happen sooner rather than later? Will those three jump to a next level really quickly in 2023 um, to push us, to push us even more and make us even more dynamic 
inside our front half and get that balance right between defence and offence. I've given the youngster a 5.5 out of 10. Um, you know, I, I think games, 18, I'm oh, sorry, 21, big tick. Moments, big tick. Learning, big tick. Potential, tick. Okay. Uh, but I couldn't give him anything more than 5.5 out of 10, just because you look statistically what he's able to do. Um, I'm sure internally they probably would have rated it a little bit higher, but I'm not involved internally. Okay, speak soon. Oh, actually, what did you think? What did you think of the year of Corey Durden? There's no doubt he's got some great potential.